As you might know, the team here at Kulon Motorsport has been building electric efficiency vehicles since 2009 and in late 2015 we became the owners of Australia's most efficient manned land vehicle. In preparation to beat our own record and chase some others, we haven't just been working on making our car more efficient, but our driving style too. After lots of research, we found a number of battery-powered Shell Eco Marathon teams use Coast and Burn, a fuel-saving method used by hypermilers in gasoline-powered vehicles in which the driver ex accelerates to a given speed using the engine at its peak efficiency before coasting down to a set speed in a high gear. During this time, the, the engine typically doesn't consume any fuel. They repeat this throughout their journey, with most hypermiles claiming a big improvement in their fuel economy. Is this method applicable to electric vehicles? And if so, how much more efficient than maintaining the average, same average speed would this method be? These are the two questions that I'll address in the following video. So to work this out, uh, I came up with the following method after uh, having considered the free body diagrams. So in the coast phase, uh, you've got the free body, uh, it's travelling along, and it's being pulled back by two forces. Uh, you've got the force of uh, friction from rolling resistance from the tyres, and uh, that's dependent upon the following equation coefficient of rolling resistance times by the mass times by 9.8 which is the gravity constant. Uh, then you've got uh, the force of aerodynamic drag. Now this one's actually a quadratic equation it uh, changes with the, the velocity and it's uh, defined by coefficient of drag times by half of the air density which is normally 1.28 times by the velocity squared times by the frontal area of the vehicle. So knowing all of those we can work out what the average force is acting upon the vehicle um, pulling it back opposing the uh, direction of travel. Knowing what that force is and knowing the, the mass of the vehicle we can then determine what the acceleration rate is uh, opposing motion. So the acceleration is defined by F over M, uh, which is force over mass. So you get the two forces, the two average forces, and then you divide it by the mass of the vehicle. Now in the burn phase, you've got an additional force to deal with. So you've got the two forces from the coast phase, and then you've got the force of the motor. Now if force friction and the force from aerodynamic drag are equal to the force from the motor then your speed's going to be constant. If your motor is providing a force that is greater than the frictional force and the aerodynamic uh, drag then the vehicle will be accelerating and this is what we want during the burn phase. Therefore uh, the acceleration at, in burn phase is equal to the force of the motor uh, take the force of friction and aerodynamic drag to give you a net gain of force and that's divided by mass of the vehicle. So we've looked at the free body diagram and uh, the equations for calculating the forces that act upon the vehicle. Uh, now looking at the actual calendar itself we'll look at why we want to use those uh, acceleration rates and what we're actually doing in the, uh, in the calculator. So in the calculator, you put your variables in, that coefficient of rolling resistance, uh, the coefficient of aerodynamic drag, uh, the air density, I've put it as 1.2, the frontal area of vehicle, uh, the mass of the vehicle, uh, the weight here is, the equation is just the uh, mass times by the gravity constant of 9.8, then this is the pulse speed, so that's the speed in kilometers per hour that we want to get up to before we uh, start to coast. And then we divide that speed by 3.6 to give us the velocity in meters per second. This is now the uh, minimum speed where we want to start accelerating again. And again, divided by 3.6 to give us the velocity. We'll get into the motor voltage uh, and efficiency a little bit later and uh, the same with the motor uh, 
constants such as motor KT, uh, the gearing ratio and what wheel sizes you're using. So up here we start with the uh, coast phase, the initial velocity of 9.72 meters per second. This here, this equation, um, it's not the most optimal way to do it. Essentially we are uh, calculating the aerodynamic drag uh, at the highest speed um, and the aerodynamic drag at the lowest speed and then dividing by two. It's got um, a, quite a low margin of error though at the lower speeds um, but given it's a quadratic equation that will change quite a lot if it goes higher. Now for the frictional drag it's that equation from before uh, coefficient of rolling resistance times by the weight of the vehicle and then this acceleration rate here is what we calculated before. So uh, it's the two forces added together and divided by the mass of the vehicle. To calculate the time spent coasting, um, we are taking the initial velocity from the minimum velocity and then dividing it by the acceleration rate. So it gives us 35.15 uh, seconds. And then the distance coasted is the same equation. So S equals to UT plus half AT squared. And average speed as calculated before. <coughs> now we go to the burn phase. We start off with our initial velocity uh, being the minimum. Uh, the motor power. So this is your motor voltage times by the optimal motor current where you'll be achieving the maximum motor efficiency. And then to calculate this motor force, uh, we can't just calculate this from the motor power itself. We must know the um, KT or Newton meters per amp of the, the motor itself, uh, the gearing ratio to the back wheel uh, or the drive wheel, and then the uh, wheel diameter itself. So to calculate this motor force, uh, we times the KT by the current and for us that gives us uh, 1.06 uh, newton meters at the motor times by uh, the gearing ratio so 9.6 at the back wheel and then you're calculating the uh, newton meters around the radius of the wheel so how it's acting on the ground so we took um, the motor at uh, the wheel diameter and then uh, divided it, calculated it into uh, millimetres and divided by two to get the distance that the force was acting over. And this results in a motor force of 25 newtons. Uh, the acceleration rate is what we discussed before. It's um, the motor force, take these two forces and then divide it by the mass. And that gives us the minimum burn time with that given motor force. We then can calculate the time, the percentage of time spent coasting and burning, and that's done by adding these two times together and then dividing by each time. So uh, the time spent coasting in this case is 62% of the time and 30. 8% uh, of the time spent burning. Uh, distance of burn, same calculation as this one, as with that. Now for the average overall speed, we take the two average speeds and then divide by two. Finally, getting over here to the burn and coast, to calculate the watt hours per burn, uh, we're taking this motor power and then uh, timesing it by uh, the motor efficiency or 1 plus 1 plus 100 take the motor efficiency so you times it by 111 or 110.5 percent and that gives us uh, the power required because uh, this power here that we calculate the motor force from is after the inefficiencies and then we divide the time spent at the hour by the time spent uh, burning. 
of this burn time by the uh, by three thousand six hundred. So we determine that two, in this case two point four two watt hours per burn, or two point four two watt hours per twenty one seconds. And then to calculate watt hours used in one hour, we're time timesing the motor power plus the inefficiency factor uh, by this uh, part here. So 38% of the hour was, is spent burning. So it's 38% of 370. And then we divide the number of watt hours in one hour by the average speed to give us the watt hours per kilometer. For the constant uh, speed strategy, we calculate the power used um, by uh, getting the average, by get, uh, finding the aer aerodynamic drag at uh, the average speed or average velocity of 8.3 meters per second. Uh, also, we find the coefficient of rolling resistance um, times by the weight and times by velocity to find the frictional drag, and then we uh, times that amount of power needed by the motor efficiency at a constant speed. In this case, it results to 88.71 uh, watt hours per hour. And uh, that results at 30 kilometers per hour in 2.95 watt hours per kilometer. So this gives us a very easy comparison. Uh, whichever number is lowest is the most optimal strategy. Clearly, for an electric motor, in this case, it's better to be using a constant speed strategy. Uh, but for petrol engines, given their different uh, volumetric efficiencies, it might be better to actually use a burn and coast strategy.